Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Those my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the kimono. This is a cardigan and it's amazing. It's from our friends at Yarnspirations.com featuring Karen and Pantone Bamboo. We're going to be doing granny squares today but they are offset so the centers are actually off to the side just a little bit and there's also a color option that is available to you in being able to switch out your colors. If you look at it really carefully you'll notice that not each one of these are the same. It's not self striping yarn but it's just a matter of changing the colors and we're gonna be covering that later on in the tutorial. Also what we're going to be doing today, the collar is built right after everything has been assembled and we're just gonna follow along the collar and then make it into a rib stitching that matches it and there's really kind of no sewing involved other than coming down the sides and to put it together and the underside here and then you're gonna trace the outside here with the nice single crochet in order to give it a good finished look. So that's what we're gonna be getting ourselves into today. So here we have the layout just like you see. There's three diagrams. You're gonna need at least one of these and one of this. So what you're gonna do is that this is extra small to large. This is the layout that you need for that. For the extra large to five extra large, this is your layout. So obviously you need more squares to cover more surface area. But the squares are also the same. So there's two sizes of crochet hooks. You're gonna use the larger size for the squares. So this is a five millimeter size H crochet hook. And then you'll use a smaller hook then for doing the particular collar. So once you have all the squares done you'll notice that the orientation all looks the same. So you're just gonna position them all. There is a difference of the coloring that you have. So if you really look at her carefully you'll notice that her top it's not all the same looking squares. All they've done is just change the order of the squares of the coloring and that instruction is given to you on the, the one page. So in the back of the page here you're going to notice that extra small to large they have make nine, make nine, make nine, make nine. And so what's gonna happen here is that they're telling you to change the orders for nine uh, each of these particular orders. For extra large to five extra large they're telling you to change the orders again and you're making twelves instead in order to have it balanced. And then once you're ready to assemble you're just gonna lay it out and just move them around and make it look like it's all pretty cool and then you're just gonna do an invisible join in order to put them together. And then all you're just going to do then is just fold it and there is your particular kimono. You're going to sew with an invisible join on the one side here and on the underside here to form that and you're just gonna do a single crochet around the ends of the sleeves and then we're going to begin doing the collars. The collar is actually joined right to the project the very first time we're gonna start. So you just follow the edge and then over and back and you're gonna create the ribbing that you see within the pattern. So the yarn of choice is Karen and Pantone Bamboo. It's gonna be a really nice luxurious um, cardigan when you're done and you're gonna need a certain set of braids in order to do this. So for the extra small to large size you're gonna need a total of seven braids and then for the extra large to five extra large you need a total of ten. So you just have to separate these braids out and then use the yarn and just match the color that you're rec being recommended on the project. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm only gonna show you how to make one square because once you understand the square it's just a matter of sewing them together to create the shape in order to get the final look. So with the five millimeter size H crochet hook and your Karen and Pantone bamboo you're going to start off and you're going to create a slip knot and you want to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and then once you have that done you're going to go around. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the first chain and pull through and there is the center ring. Lay down the straggler on top of the ring so that it becomes part of it. Let's begin round number one. So we're going to chain a total of three which counts as your first half or first double crochet and then you're gonna double crochet two more times into the center of that ring that you just made. So one and two. So with the chaining of three that you just did and these two double crochets there's a total of three double crochets. So to turn the corner for this particular one is that you're gonna chain three and then coming back into the center of the ring keep the straggler down underneath so that it can get stuck underneath and you're gonna put in three more double crochets. So one, two and three and then chain a total of three. So one, two, three and coming back in three more double crochets. So one, two, three and then chain three. So one, two, three and then come back in again for three more double crochets. This is the fourth and final side but you're not quite done yet because you still have a final corner to do. To do the final corner you're gonna chain three. So one, 
two, three, and slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that you started with and finish it off. So just pull through and through. There is your center and using your scissors just cut this yarn and then we're gonna weave it in. Let's just quickly review on how to fasten in your ends. Just trim your yarn and then just take the trimmed yarn and just pull through. Now when you go to trap it in the next one you wanna get it through this chain. So just pull it through the chain weaving it through and what I would recommend you do is that weave it all the way to the other chain and therefore it'll be woven in twice. So you have a choice. You can either just leave it now or you can trim it like you can or you can trim it. I would leave it and just get your next layer in there and then trim once it's gone. So let's move it along to row, round number two using a different color. So round number two they're suggesting to move to the next corner. So this is where we finished. They're suggesting to move on to the next one. Let's create a slip knot to begin and you're gonna go into this chain three space and just stick your hook right in the hole and then just yarning over pulling it through to fasten on and then chain three counts as a double crochet and then three, uh, two more double crochets into that same space. Save one and two. So with the chain three and those two that gives you your three and then you're gonna turn the corner so you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and in the same space you wanna place in three more double crochet. So one, two and three. Notice how I was going up over top of the straggler when I was doing that. So I was just catching it into position. So you're going to now go and chain one and you're gonna end up in the next corner already. So the corners will always be three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in this round. So chain three and back into the same one and put in three double crochets, chain one and then jump again. So each one of these corners I want you to put three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet and then I'll meet you at the end of this round. When you come all the way back around you're just gonna chain up one and then you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and then you're done this color. So what I want you to do is just trim it like you did before, weave in your ends. I'd strongly recommend that when you weave it, weave it around so that it hits beyond this first, this corner here and then trap that in position and then we'll start round number three together. As I prepare for the third round I'm just going back and just trimming out my ends as I go. The ones that I've already covered and then I'm leaving the last one that I just did so that when I cover it over top of it in the next round I will trim it then. So this is where we ended. So we're gonna start off here for round number three. We're no longer gonna go in a complete circle up until round number five is when we're gonna do that again. So that this will push it off to the side so that we're gonna start growing it outward. Let's go to this corner here. So this is where we finished. So come back to this corner and let's begin our third color. To begin our third color we're just going to start off with a slip knot again and just put it onto the hook and coming right again, coming in and you want to attach it and chain three. One, two, three. That's your first double crochet and you're gonna put two more double crochets. So you're treating it like a half a corner pretty much. And our goal for this particular round here if you look at the picture is to get ourselves just until the opposite one on the other side. So chain up one and then advance to your next space and there's gonna be three double crochets in that one. So one, two and three and then chain one and then you're gonna end up in a corner. The corner is what you already know. So three double crochet. Okay and insert chain three and three double crochet again. Chain one coming into the next space double crochet. Chain one and then you come into the very last one here. So you're only going halfway around and you're gonna put in three double crochet and then you're done. So once you get those three in there that's it for this particular color. So you want to trim it and then weave in your ends and the goal for you to, in order to keep everything looking in balance is that when you start the next round or the next row, it should say row because we're not gonna go all the way around, is that what we want to focus on for this particular one is that we just 
take this project and rotate back and start here. So don't flip it upside down. Just keep it to the front and start right back to where we were. So let's begin row number four. Let's begin row number four. Let's create a slip knot and you're gonna come to the top of the first chain three. And you're gonna chain four which will count as a double crochet and chain one. So just one, two and three. That's your double crochet. Chain one is your uh, next space. So there's a total of four chains there. So what you wanna do is come to the next available space and put in three double crochet. So we have one, two and three and then chain one and then jump to the next space. So you can see that these things get bigger so the sides become larger before you get to the new corners. So chain one and then you're gonna come to the corner. So the corner will be always the same. It'll be three double crochet. Chain three. Three double crochet. Okay, and then chain one and start down the next side. So come to the next space, put in three double crochet. So one, two, and three. And chain one, come to the next space, three double crochet. And to finish off this side, you have to chain one first and then double crochet into the last stitch. And that keeps the spacing equal for both sides. So you can see that you have a gap before you started this side and then you leave it with the gap on the side. So finish up that one. This is row number four and the round number five. We're gonna go back to a complete round all the way around. As a tip I'm gonna throw this in. See the starting strand? We couldn't bury it underneath because we chained four. So what I wouldn't want you, what I would want you to do, what I would do if it were me and you weren't watching me is that I would just put this into this chain. So just weave it into that chain and then just coming around because what's gonna happen is that you're gonna go into that piece and then you can trap that underneath without having to sew it into position. So just weave it in back through this chain and then when you come back around it's just gonna grab onto it and hide it. Let's begin round number five. So in round number five we're now gonna continue and if you notice really carefully here you see all these spaces they all line up to each other so it gives you the equal amount of spaces to be able to go around. So if you kind of follow it so you have one, two, three spaces, one, two, three spaces just like you see and then you have these ones over here so you got your spaces and etc. So let's all kind of work it out together and let's begin. So let's just chain up a total of three. So just starting off and I want you to go into this beginning space. So sorry let's start off in the very beginning. So this is where you chain four and that you're just gonna go right into the space and you are going to chain up three. So one, two, three and then two double crochet into the same one. So there is your half a corner. We are gonna go all the way around for this round. So I just went and buried in my yellow as I went. You're going to chain one and then just jump to the next space. And you're gonna put in three double crochet. And then chain one, come into the next space. Okay, chain one and now you're into a corner so you already know what to do. So it's gonna be three double crochet. And then chain three, so one, two, three and then three double crochet in. And then keep turning to go all the way around. So after you've done that chain one and then come into the next space. So one, two, and three and I have some fun stuff coming out of my yarn ball. There we go, done. And then chain up one and then coming to the next space. Three double crochet. So this next space is interesting. So this is where you were kind of um, finished off before. So what you wanna do is that you wanna treat this as if it is the corner because it is. So chain up one before you start that and then just coming into this and make this a new corner. So one, two, and three, chain three to turn and then back into that same spot 
So that was the double crochet that you were covering up over top of there. And then chain one and then coming into the next space. Chain one, next space. Chain one, next space is the corner here. So you're just gonna have your three double crochet, chain three, and then three double crochet again. And then chain one, and then start in the next space to go around. So I picked some um, colors that were kind of not the best that worked together but I kind of did it on purpose A because it was easy for me to grab from my shelf but B um, it, you can really notice the coloring separation. So if you, and you, ha if you have something that's really close in coloring you can't always see that uh, in tutorial format. So you're gonna come into the very uh, final one here and finish off this corner so it'll be three double crochet. And then chain three and then slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three. And then you want to weave in your ends and therefore this is your granny square and you can see that the center is completely offset. So weave in your ends and I'll be right back. So now that I have my granny square complete, you're gonna notice in the instructions it says make nine, make nine, make nine, make nine. So these for the extra small to large it tells you that they want nine of this color orientation. So color A was uh, a color one, B is color two and etc. And nine of those will be exactly the same layout. Then make nine uh, motifs and they're saying to switch the colors. So B is in color one, C is in color two and etc. and keep doing that. You also find the instructions then for the extra large to five extra large it'll be making 12 and it has each one of these broken down. So when you really look at the model you're going to notice that it looks really kind of random doesn't it? And the reality is is that it's asking you to change it and then when you're laying it all out you just mix up all these together so that it looks really random instead of each one of these being the exact same color layout. So it's actually a kind of a neat idea. It also makes your Karen uh, and Pantone bamboo also go a lot further for your color design as well. So that's a kind of a neat concept. So let's uh, just talk quickly about doing the color. So now I'm gonna leave it to you to do this particular idea and get all your squares done and then lay them out and do an invisible join. In the more information of this video I'm gonna put another video link on doing the invisible join and what you want to do with that is that using a tapestry needle you want to attach them with the same color that you have. So you, if this is yellow and the other one was blue just choose one of the two colors and then you're just gonna use the back loop only and attach them. So use the back loop of the other one and bring them together as a whip stitch and then that will put it as a nice flat join when you're doing that. So that's a really great idea. So you're going to join all of these with the invisible join and then you're gonna fold it over and then you're just going to whip stitch along the bo bottom here and put them together. So let's fold it. So you're gonna whip stitch it and sew it here and here and then here and here and then you're just going to put in a single crochet around the outside just to make it look finished. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the collar area next and we're gonna attach it right to the project and trace it and just follow it around and go back and forth. So let's quickly review on how to do the collar what it's suggesting for you to do. So using a smaller hook a four and a half millimeter size uh, I believe that's a G and you are just going to attach along the base uh, section here. So if you're just gonna have it folded over you're just gonna attach along here keeping the right side up and you're just gonna trace it and you're gonna follow it. So just going right into the actual stitch work that you see. Okay so you're just gonna attach it so go right into the stitch work chain one and then single crochet right in and you're just gonna put in one single crochet in each of the double crochets that you run into and if there's a chain one space just fill it in with a double crochet. Just for full transparency I am using the same size crochet hook because it is a tutorial sample um, but you should go with the smaller one to keep the ribbing really nice and tight. So if you ha have a chain one space just fill it in with a single crochet and then just carry on into the regular double crochets when they exist. And you're gonna follow that all the way around on your project until you get to the end of the other side of the front of the coat and then you're gonna have to turn and go back in the other direction. 
So this is giving you a nice secure way to join everything and in the very last space you're only gonna put in one single crochet. So eventually let's just say you came around and you have the last space like you see down here. Just put in one single crochet and you're done. So it's gonna ask you to turn your work and then we're going to begin doing that as well. So after you turn your coat you're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in each of the stitches now going all the way back to the other side of the front collar of the coat or the front of the coat. So you're just gonna trace it up all the way up to the neck and back down the other side and it's one double crochet and what we're doing is we're getting it established for the ribbing that will appear once we hit row number three. So that please do that and just follow around your collar. So once you've traced it to the other side you're just going to put in one double crochet in the last one and then you turn and we're now gonna go back up now through the other, through the top, up through the neck and down the other side. So I'm just gonna say it's a row so now that you've got it established. So row number three we're going to then start the ribbing. So we're gonna chain up two which counts as a half double crochet and the first one we wanna do is a front post uh, double crochet. So coming in, so just wrapping, going into the side of the post, out the other side, pull through, pull through two and two. So this is gonna start the ribbing. Then what we're going to do is that we are gonna do one double crochet back post in the next one. So wrap it coming from the back, from the side of the post and back out the other side and double crochet. And then the next one's gonna be front. And you're gonna go all the way across the row of just doing opposite to each other. So this one's a back post double crochet, the next one's a front post. And you're gonna do this and this is going to establish what the ribbing is gonna look like now for the remaining of your jacket. Now the total distance of the of the collar is five inches and that is from the very beginning here that's attached. So you can really clearly tell in my coloring that uh, where it starts. So that's our kind of mission is to keep going back and forth doing this to continue the ribbing. So the secret is is once you get this ribbing started you just have to keep it in the same spot every time. And I'm almost at the end. And when you get to the end you are going to put in one half double crochet at the very end. So just in the chain three space just one, one half double crochet. So you turn your work. So look at the project and you're going to match exactly what you see. So you're gonna chain up two cause you're starting and in this one you see it's in the back so you wanna keep it in the back. So wrapping it and do a back post double crochet and the next one you see it's in the front so keep that as being the front. So it's a front post double crochet and this will keep all of your stitch work looking the same. So essentially you're just looking at the stitch and throwing in the exact same that it needs in order to continue that ribbing effect that you see. And that's all this is and you just keep going back and forth until you get a total of um, five inches and that's the distance like in this direction. So it's really does, you really don't have to do that much stitching uh, in order to achieve that and it's really a neat idea. So you just wanna continue this then until you get it done and then you're just gonna fasten off and then weave in your ends. Now the last part of the instructions say that you want a single crochet around the sleeve. So you can see that it's been single crocheted just like you see around the sleeve. So just trace it with a single crochet and then finish that off and you'll also notice that it's been trimmed along the bottom just here so it start here at the bottom and just trace it all the way with the single crochet all the way around and back to the top here of the of the collar area. So just continue all the way around and that's how you do this thing. This is a really simple project. Just take it step by step. Just take your time and you just follow the diagrams on how to put things together and we'll uh, you'll probably have this done in no time at all. So this is how you do the crochet kimono. It's a really kind of a speedy tutorial today because the reality is is that you just gotta put your time in to make these um, stitch work that you see in order to be able to make this particular project. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com.